Sunrise in the Muskokas, two hours north of Toronto, a place blessed by Mother Nature, a land of waterfalls, hidden gems like High Falls, a well-kept local secret. That is, until Brian Colden came along. When you first came here and saw the waterfalls and all of this going on, what were your thoughts? I was in awe. I've been coming to Muskoka since I was 18 and never, ever knew High Falls existed, never mind Never mind all the other waterfalls. And you come out here and all of a sudden you say to yourself, man, this is my yeah. dream? I just couldn't believe it. Mother Nature's creation. Colden was looking for a resort, and here in Bracebridge on the shores of Clear Lake and right across from High Falls, he found one. 33 acres, two sandy beaches, a beautiful but sleepy spot ripe for development. Colden decided to turn his resort into a summer playground for families, the kind of place you see on tourism brochures. New cottages with the latest conveniences. Wagon rides for the kiddies. On the beach, a water park with kayaks, paddle boats, even horseback riding into that pristine lake. Stressed out city families found a retreat and Colden celebrated in his new hot tub, complete with a miniature high falls. I was sitting in the hot tub and I was looking around and I was just, I was just going, wow. I don't believe this, like I'm here. It, it, I actually pulled it off. While Colden reveled in his success, the neighbors were less than enthusiastic. Their tranquility was gone, and the configuration of the High Falls property made it impossible for them to get away from all the noise and activity at the water park. There are four private cottages right in the center of High Falls Resort. The only way in, a road cutting right through Colden's property a road used for decades by real estate agent Anita Ramsey to get to her weekend retreat, a place she enjoyed with her brother, Marty Bosfeld, and next door neighbor, Lynn Johnston. 18 years, Anita and I enjoyed the property. We came up, we both had heavy jobs that took all our time. This was our retreats. We came up, we enjoyed it, to hear the kids on the rocks swimming and laughing. It. it I named my place Eden because it was, it was a little Garden of Eden. A Garden of Eden, no more. Across the lake, John Brookmuller watched Colden's busy water park with dismay. For 30 years, Brookmuller pretty much had high falls to himself, and he figured Brian Colden was wrecking the place. It was beautiful, quiet, tranquility, and then Brian Golden came along, he says, that's my land. Now, there's one thing you have to understand about the Muskokas. Tradition is important. Bracebridge hasn't changed much since wealthy Torontonians began summering up here a century ago. And some people thought that Brian Colden was upsetting the natural order. Down at the Bracebridge Examiner, reporter Matthew Sittler recalls that the word on the street about Colden was getting nasty and personal. People would call him crazy and stuff like that. You hear about it in small towns. Newcomers, if they kind of rub the locals the wrong way, they don't get accepted right off the bat. Colden pressed on, oblivious to the talk in town and the neighbors' growing animosity. He had big plans, big dreams, and the energy to accomplish them. You sound like you're an A personality, totally driven. I like to do everything right, but I don't give up. I never back up a step. I always, I stop and I just keep keep at it until I get over that wall. The wall he faced at High Falls was a road, that road cutting through the resort, the only way for neighbors to get to their cottages. It could be downright dangerous. Because of the development, I was doubling, tripling the number of people in the resort. Uh, my children's playground and pool, the road was going right through the middle of it, and either the neighbors were going to run over one of the kids or one of my guests were. So Colden did the reasonable thing. He offered to build a new one at the back of the property at his own expense just for those neighbors. Sounds reasonable, but reason doesn't figure largely in this story. On the surface, the fight was about a road, but underneath it all, Colden was beginning to suspect that most of the neighbors just wanted him to pack up those dreams and get out of town. He's complaining that we're driving through the resort? That is a deeded right of way that we all had checked when we bought our properties. Johnston tried everything to block construction of the new road. Trying to make peace, Colton dropped by his neighbor's cottage. Well, listen to the two versions of what happened next. 
He broke into my home. He threatened to kill me. The police were on the other line. I was talking to them about what to do about my road when he broke in. I went in without an invitation. Oh, no, I was invited through the door. And uh, right at that moment, she started to scream and, and act all crazy and panicky. And so she just started screaming, get out of my house, get out of my house. And she then made a call after this that I alleged, allegedly threatened to kill her. Brian Colden was charged with uttering a death threat, a charge that was eventually dismissed. In the meantime, he was ordered to stay away from his neighbors. Colden says that soon those neighbors were lying in wait, jumping out of bushes, hiding in cars, then calling police, complaining that he was breaching his bail conditions by getting too close. Always these complaints came on a busy weekend. And, and the police would come here, the OPP would come here, three cars, two to three cars at a shot. They'd pull angle ways in my parking lot like there's been a death or a shooting. Often this scene ended with police carting Colden off to jail, right in front of his guests. And if that wasn't bad enough for business, across the lake, John Brookmuller watched his neighbor building up the beach and decided on another way to cause trouble for Colden. And he started to put sand, 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 truckloads and truckloads of sand alongside the beach and into the water. And I made a sign and I said on it, rock and sand makes a snake land. High Falls is snake land? Snake land. You got a lot of snakes around There's here? There's no snakes in this whole area. Well, there are garter snakes, but it's just, uh, I'm the snake. It's a, it's a play on words. I'm the snake. Oh. Other people that come here are the snakes as well, my guests, and they're going to drive us out.